I notice that whenever I travel and I'm meeting people and they ask me where I'm from, and when I tell them I'm from Detroit, I tend to get this kind of reaction, weird expression from them. And it's because they read in the news and see all the negative things that happen in Detroit. And yes, it's true that Detroit does have its challenges. However, Detroit has many wonderful hidden gems that will surprise you. And one of them is Father Solanus Casey. He's dead, but the church has named him as Venerable. He is the first U.S. born person to become Venerable. Now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about him. Father Solanus Casey was born in 1870 in Oak Grove, Wisconsin. His real name was Bernard. His parents were from Ireland and moved to Wisconsin and had 16 children. Bernard was the sixth in the family. His parents were devout Catholics and taught the children about the faith. His family worked very hard on their family farm. When Bernard became a young adult, he decided to leave home. He wanted to find a job and he worked many places. His first job was as a lumberjack, and then he worked as a nurse's aide in a hospital. Then he worked as a prison guard. And after that, he got a job as a streetcar operator. That last job was what totally transformed his life. While he was working one day, he stopped the streetcar because he saw on the street a man stabbing and beating, trying to kill this woman. Bernard could not believe what he saw and that such evil could be in the world. And that made him begin to think about his faith and about God and about everlasting life. And at the age of 21, he made the decision to enter the priesthood. In Milwaukee, Wisconsin, he joined the seminary named St. Francis de Sales Seminary. While at that seminary, Bernard struggled with his academics and his studies. Main reason is because the teachers only spoke Latin or German. Also, the teachers didn't look at him as being that intelligent, and all the other students were seen as very, very bright. They recommended that he drop out of seminary and thought that he was more suited to join a religious order. He was quite sad about that, so he prayed and prayed, and he asked the Virgin Mary, what do you think I should do? What is God's will for me? And lo and behold, he heard a woman's voice tell him, to go to Detroit. He knew that's what he had to do. So he'd heard that there was St. Bonaventure Monastery in Detroit and the Capuchin monks lived there. So on Christmas Eve in 1897, Bernard boarded a train and got to Detroit and lived and then on as a Capuchin. When he joined the Capuchins, they gave Bernard a new name. He would now be called Solanus. And just like in Milwaukee, Solanus struggled studying here to become a priest. The Capuchins were known to be a quite superior order, and they recognized that he wasn't that intelligent, but they knew that he would be a good priest. So they decided to tell him, okay, you can become a priest. However, you can't give homily at Mass or hear confession. 
They were afraid that because he wasn't that smart that he would teach people incorrectly. So they gave him a specific job, and that was as a porter. That meant that he would do cleaning, greet people at the door, and see how he could help them. But that job as a porter really wasn't the job of a priest. It was usually what the brothers did. Father Solanus accepted that with dignity and accepted it as God's will. It's wonderful how God knew exactly what he was doing. When people would need help, they would come to the monastery, knock on the door, and who would answer but Father Solanus. And he was always kind and generous and welcoming and offered to help them. They would come in and talk to him and bear their soul, and he would pray with them and listen to them. And when they were done, they would leave and notice that their prayers had been answered by God. For example, if they came sick, they would leave healed. If they came unemployed, they would later find a job. If they had family problems, their family problems would be healed. So Father Solanus's prayers were answered by God. People began to realize this and started to line up at the monastery to see him. So he didn't only do that, but Father Solanus knew many people and saw poverty that was in the city. So he decided to set up a soup kitchen in the building next door to the monastery to feed the poor people. And that soup kitchen is still around to this very day. People lined up to talk with him because they knew his prayers were being answered by God. And also when people would meet him, they would feel inspired. They would feel God's love, God's peace, his presence. And what happened is that people continued to bother him and bother him. And the superiors in the monastery grew quite concerned. So they moved him to another state. When he got there, the exact same thing happened. People heard of this priest and they all wanted to talk to him. So they moved him again, and again, people found him and wanted to talk to him and would line up to see him. And this kept happening over and over again until 1956, when Father Solanus was old and sick and very weak. The superiors decided at that point to bring him back home to Detroit, to the monastery. One year later, in 1957, Father Solanus passed away. So very many people attended his funeral. When the service was over outside at the cemetery, people came to his tomb to pray and asked him to pray for them. And yes, God continued to answer prayers. Sick people became healed. People who lost jobs found jobs, all kinds of things, for years and years and years. And the Capuchin monks decided at that point it was better to bring his body inside and bury it in the chapel. So they opened his grave and noticed that his body was still in perfect condition, incorporable. So they buried him again inside the church where he remains to this day. And people continue to pray to his tomb and ask for help or favors. So if you go to Detroit, visit the St. Bonaventure Monastery and you will see his tomb with little pieces of papers, which are prayers that people leave on his tomb.
While Father Solanus was still alive, people asked him why God so often answered his prayers. Father Solanus said, Really, whatever I pray for, ask for, I always believe he will help. And he also told people that it's important, no matter what you pray for, always thank God for his time to show that you really believe that God will help you. And it's possible that Father Solanus in his life can inspire each and every one of us to always trust God and to know and to love other people. Thank you and God bless you.